SVR09 was an okay game, right? It just felt like such a safe game though. Yeah, they had a role to WrestleMania and create a finisher, but there's nothing like wow. But regardless, we played it, we had some fun. Yet at the end of the day though, I always feel like that game didn't have enough content. I would go back and play 08 and 07 because there was just something missing. So 2009 passed, I spent a lot of time playing other games such as World at War, Infamous, GTA 4, and I totally forgot about SVR 09. And then I was watching Smackdown one night and the SVR 2010 commercial came on and the hype began. For for 08 the marketing was all about the fighting styles and ECW being featured which was fine and exciting and 09 was all about tag team wrestling? I love tag team wrestling as much as the other guy, but really? That's it? There's only so many times you can do the Hardys vs DX. So then I saw the first Smackdown vs Raw 2010 commercial and from that very moment I knew 2010 was going to be something special. Every single SVR fan I knew was hyped because it was all about creation. It was our world now, that was a tagline and this is what we always wanted. More creation, more freedom, more control and more fun. This game, all these years later, is still loved and fondly remembered by anyone who played it. I love this game. I loved it so much that for some reason my dumb ass has 3 copies. Yikes. But we love this game because it gave us so much, so many features that WWE games still have to this day or features that we miss to this day. This was a special game and after that really average 2009 this is what the fans needed and we got something that resulted in us spending countless hours playing WWE games once again like it was 2006. So it's 2020, the world is ending, let's go back and take a look at Smackdown vs Raw 2010. First up, this is it folks, the end of an era. From the first SmackDown vs Raw in 2005 all the way to 2010, we got some of the best soundtracks of any video games ever. The soundtracks of our childhood. Because of the songs featured in those SVR games, I was able to discover artists that otherwise I would never listen to. Like I grew up listening to 50 Cent, Eminem, and Jay-Z, I was and am a huge hip hop head. I wasn't really sitting there listening to any rock bands, I mean other than Linkin Park cause at that point who didn't. But then I played the SVR games and boom, 3 Days Grace, boom, Breaking Benjamin, Godsmack, Puddle of Mud. All big bands that rock fans knew of, but I wasn't going to find them if it wasn't for SVR. And then the songs from the not so big bands who I definitely was never gonna find, like Egypt Central and Fireball Ministry, those SVR games made my music taste so diverse. And for that, I will always love the first 6 Smackdown vs Raw games regardless. And this one was amazing as well. Mix in with wrestlers themes, we also had songs in the soundtrack that were used as pay per view themes, like Skillet, I Need a Hero, and Monster. Sick Puppies had the song, You're Going Down, and that song made me want to fight anyone and everyone, still unbroken by Leonard Skinner, all of them were bangers. And this was it, an end of an era. After this, WWE soundtracks were just wrestlers themes or a few songs chosen by a wrestler or Pete Diddy, which I don't mind personally, but from the first SVR to SVR 2010, it just hit different. One of the coolest things about this game was a training facility. You start the game and you're right in the action. I remember being a little kid and playing FIFA 07 and as soon as you start the game, you're Ronaldinho in the practice arena. You could spend a good 15 minutes just messing around there, having the time of your life trying to beat the goalie before even seeing the menu, before even choosing a mode or a team. And this was the attempt for SVR. It was cool, it was different, you're in a real facility that looks just like FCW, posters are everywhere and you can just practice. You talking about practice? We talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game, we talking about practice. It was just a fun little addition that's always running in the background. This game had a solid roster. Think of WWE in 2009 and they're all here. And I just love the character selection screen because the models look so awesome. Compare Cena from 2010 to 09. At least now when I choose Cena, I don't feel like I'm choosing a created wrestler from No Mercy on the N64. But everyone looks awesome. You have Jeff, Edge, HBK, Triple H, Taker, Orton, Heo Jericho, Christian made his return, and even Goldust. But once again though, the lack of legends hurts. But I get it, hey, I get it CHQ, gotta milk legends of Wrestlemania as much as you can. As Jay said back in 96, can't knock the hustle. But hey, at least they spared us some spirit change unlike SV09 and gave us The Rock, Million Dollar Man, Dusty Rhodes, and Cowboy Orton. Now I don't know who was going to play with Cowboy Orton, but at least he was there. At least it was something. But these idiots, man, they spared us 75 cents, but they couldn't even give us the dollar. They just had to make Stone Cold Steve Austin paid DLC. How was there not a riot? Stone Cold Steve Austin as paid DLC. Either pre-order him at GameStop, which first of all, ill GameStop, or second, pay a dollar. Now a dollar isn't much, okay I'm not that broke, but it's the principle. 
And the worst part is, Austin looks worse than any created wrestler anyone could have made. My little cousin, who doesn't even know what a stone cold is, could make a better stone cold than this. They really just picked up the most random ball guy, threw him in a vest, and caught it a day. Otherwise though, cool roster, I respect it. One of the best features they added here is something that we still have now, but back then this just made us so happy. Superstar threads. Finally, we could change the color of wrestlers attires so we no longer would spend the entire year wrestling with the same damn custy Rey Mysterio outfit or the same damn edge attire. Now you could get creative and change the colors and give them different attires. You can make it something legit or you can make pink dust. Now we were so used to this, we don't even think about it, it's nothing special, it's expected, but hey, back then, back in my day, this got us hype. This was game changing. So the entrances of course are beautiful, the stages look amazing, but at first you're probably like, damn, this looks just like SVR09, but what makes this game different, what makes this game shine, is the detail and the effort that was put into the presentation. It's the little things, the signature before a match, the mini WWE logo in the corner, the WWE HD banners, and especially the camera angles. The camera angles are so much better than SVR09 and most wrestling games to be honest because it's not too zoomed in or zoomed out and it's dynamic. So the match starts like this, you wrestle, 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 you hit some moves, you get some cool camera cuts and then it moves to this direction so you can actually see around the arena and as the match goes on, as it progresses, it moves to something like this and you can see the stage. The good old fashioned here comes the pain camera angle. It just adds another level to the presentation, something I wish we had now. The camera looks amazing amazing when you go outside, it feels like you're actually watching a real event and then you add in the camera cuts and the other bits they have, it just looks awesome. The game just looks very clean, there's no momentum bars filling up the screen, instead just a very minimalistic ring under your wrestler that lets you know how you're doing, if you have a signature or a finisher, I love that. So you know how in most WWE games you had a body that represented a wrestler's health that would get red as they got hurt, in this game they don't have that. In this game the wrestler's actual body parts got red as they got hurt in the game, so you attack a wrestler torso it will show damage on their body. It was random little bits that made the experience so much better like the commentary after a match ending on a pay per view saying see you on Friday for Smackdown or you know the logo that appears when a pay per view ends it appears at the end of your match. When you go into the new championship scramble match which they added it displays the rules like it's a real WWE event like it's a real pay per view and you have the bell displayed there it just feels authentic and gameplay overall to me did feel a little slower than SVR09 but not much it's still fun and it's still responsive it is generally the same though, they just made the presentation so much better to make it feel like it was a new game and it does help. Granted, the gameplay is still fun, it's balanced, you got realism but it still feels like a video game still, we didn't reach that point where it feels like a full on simulation, so if you liked 09's gameplay you would definitely like this. For years the rumble match was pretty boring, I didn't really play many royal rumble matches growing up because it was just the same old irish whip, button mash, gg if somehow you get thrown out, if you get thrown out you get depressed cause you gotta be a random wrestler like Kenny Dextra or something. So in 2010 they revamped the rumble mode, so it is still kind of irish whip, button mash, gg, but it's so much better. You start the match, you get the rules, the wrestlemania logo gets shown so the presentation is there, then the wrestlers come in, you wrestle and now when new wrestlers come in they don't just run 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 40 yard dash to the ring like robots, they actually have their entrance and if the wrestler has pyro, they have pyro. In the ring there's mini games now to eliminate someone and they vary depending on which area you're trying to eliminate someone from, new camera angles, finisher eliminations. I remember the first time playing it and getting close to the final and seeing the camera angles and a mini cutscene played, it would focus on the wrestlers in the ring and the mania logo, it made it feel like such a big deal. It felt like you were playing something that actually mattered. Presentation goes a long way, gameplay goes a long way, and this had both of those locked down and it was perfectly balanced where like I said it still felt like a video game. It represented the time period perfectly. And the game holds up so well to this day that 10 years later it didn't really age, it, if anything it aged like Pharrell. It's still a blast to play. Road to WrestleMania is back, another year, more wild storylines that you just love to play, a good 15 hours of content. You had the Edge storyline, where you are the heel, the ultimate opportunist, you're seducing Maria, getting her to become general manager, you're out here abusing her power and your power, you make this master plan to become champion and screw over the entire roster in a way that only the rated R superstar can. It's beautiful how true to Edge's character this storyline was. You have Shawn Michaels Road to Wrestlemania, your old man HBK, getting beat up every week, your back hurts, your arm hurts, your leg hurts, 
Every week, you're just getting clapped, but you keep fighting and somehow you become world champion before WrestleMania. You form an alliance with CM Punk, but then Randy and JBL, they want to test you. They want to test Mr. WrestleMania, so you have HBK doing a retirement angle. Everybody and their mom wants to destroy you. There's twists happening, there's multiple endings, and definitely one of the more realistic road to WrestleManias. By the way, I just want to take this time out to say, we miss you, Tony. Please don't get coronavirus. Please stay safe. Then you got Brand Warfare. Wow, gee, I wonder what Brand Warfare is about. But anyway, who do you want to be? John Cena and hold it down for Raw or Triple H and hold it down for SmackDown? Brand Warfare, it seems pretty obvious. At first, it's Cena versus Triple H. Wow, so much fun. But then Big Show comes out of nowhere and destroys everyone and is like, I'm going to ECW, they've been ignored for too long. So what starts off as SmackDown versus Raw ends up being SmackDown versus Raw versus ECW and ECW just goes off. They destroy both belts, they ruin the championships, they take over, they come to Raw and clap you, they come to SmackDown and clap you. ECW gets so rowdy that Cena and Triple H have to team up and wild out. This also had a road to WrestleMania that was basically the women's revolution way before WWE had any thought about any women's revolution. So Mickey James had a road to WrestleMania and she refused to take part of a bikini contest so she got into beef with Maurice and eventually Kelly Kelly, Beth Phoenix and Natalia all get involved and you actually got a women's royal rumble. 8 years before the real deal. I forgot all about this and now looking back at it, wow this was really cool, so ahead of its time. You also got a Randy Orton one which was pretty basic, you're the leader of Legacy, you destroy Taker and a Hell in a Cell, become champion, and then Legacy slowly slowly starts to break apart. Cody and Ted have a match and you're Orton, you're the referee, but they just start beating you up and it becomes 2 on 1. So they turn on Randy and there you go, so similar to what happened in 2010. I loved how at the end of Wrestlemania when you beat Cody and you beat Ted, Dusty Rhodes casually pulls up in street attire and wants an impromptu match at Wrestlemania. What a lifestyle. Lastly, you had the creative superstar Rose to WrestleMania. Yes, the return of using a creative wrestler in a storyline in a wrestling game. But before we talk about that, let's just go over how awesome the creation suite really was. Your creative wrestlers now were better than ever. Because now items were 3D, they just look so much better. You can make your wrestler any way you wanted him or her to be. It was detailed, it was filled with customization, better than ever. Next up, you choose your moveset. Just like previous games, you had full control over your moveset. A to Z, whatever you want to edit, you could do it. This year, the Mad Men at Ukes were like, alright, you know what, make a diving finisher. So you could make something normal like this, or something that is physically impossible, but hey, YOLO. Then you can make your entrance, and now this year, using the highlight reel, you can actually make an entrance video. Look at that control, the freedom, you can make whatever you wanted and whoever you wanted, but it gets better. We got Paint Tool. Now in 2020, you spoil it, kids, you just go online, find a PNG file, upload a logo, and call it a day, but before 2010, there was barely anything custom logo related, but now, we could all be Picasso. You could draw and paint whatever you wanted, face paint, a shirt logo, a tattoo, whatever. Before this game, if John Cena pulled up with a new shirt on Raw, GG, you cannot get that shirt in the game. Wait until next year or something, pray it's in the game, but now you could draw it. Well, I couldn't. I was Picasso. If he was blind with no hands, I couldn't draw anything, but other people were gods. They could design everything, and just like that, now you had custom and updated shirts and logos and tattoos in the game. These days, it's normal. You download a logo, and nobody's sitting here drawing a logo for 10 hours in a video game anyway, but back in 2010, this was groundbreaking for us. This made our creative superstars look 10 times better and 10 times more unique. You know what else was groundbreaking? This game started community creations. No longer did we have to sit there writing down cough formulas like they were math solutions, trying to figure out how much exactly to rotate a line on somebody's head to make a wrinkle. Now you let the talented people create their art and you just download it. We take this for granted now, it's the norm, but this was special back in 2010. Look at the beautiful wrestlers people made and posted and you could download and use. CM Punk in 2010 became the straight edge messiah. So normally it would be like, oh man, we gotta wait until next year for an updated CM Punk. Well now, nope. Look at the amazing creative wrestlers people made for you. Creation was better than ever and now you could share and download content with the world. So yeah, you had the created road to Wrestlemania where you get picked out of the crowd by Santino just like how he was picked out in his debut. It was unique and it was fun. This game was just awesome. The gameplay, the presentation, the road to Wrestlemania that all gave you something different to play. The creation, making a diving finisher, make a logo, an entrance, make the wrestler of your dreams, live out your fantasies, share with the world, download other people's content. It was like a 
full complete game, whereas SVR9 just felt like a beta. This was complete, so it had all of that. But they still gave us one more thing. The best feature they could have gave us, and one of my favorite features in wrestling game history, create a story. Now you officially never ran out of anything to do. In my online video, that was my complaint. After Road to WrestleMania, what the hell do you do? They give you access to almost any cutscene imaginable and you could create a 10 year long storyline if you really wanted to. Cars blowing up, backstage attacks, anything, you name it, you could probably do it. You control the dialogue, you control the camera, the wrestlers involved, the show it takes place on, where it happens, when it happens, how it happens, create your damn story, son. The fact that this is not in the game anymore is insane. They had this in 2010, but in 2020 we can barely get a working game. Respect to the people behind Creator Story and respect to every single person who 10 years ago uploaded their story onto Community Creations for us to play. That's the thing. With Community Creations, you legit never ran out of content. You guys already know how creative SVR fans can get when they're out here spending 10 hours making a John Cena logo. What they made after being given the control they had in Creator Story was legendary. I just love Smackdown vs Raw 2010 and I know you do too. I just had too much fun going back to this and it holds up well. I still can't believe 2010 was 10 years ago, but like I said, this game aged like fine wine. This isn't the greatest wrestling game ever or anything, it's not Here Comes the Pain or SVR 07, but it's definitely one of the best. Just because of how well it was made, it felt like a well made game, something that took time and effort to make where the developers were passionate about it, unlike some other wrestling games <coughs> 2K20. Sure, there were glitches and people spamming moves online, but you can't tell me you didn't enjoy this game. Like I said, you had the content they gave you, the exhibition and the new world to WrestleMania, Championship Scramble, which most developers at that point would be like, you know what, we gave them an updated roster and these modes, that's enough content, give me my $60. But hey, they updated the creation suite, gave you so much freedom, so much control, you can make anything you ever wanted and then they gave you create a story. You could use your imagination to the fullest and then you add in community creations so you didn't even have to make the content, other people did it for you. There was basically new DLC released every hour for this game. In 2010, this was unbelievable for us. You never ran out of content, I played so many random stories, I downloaded some of the most random wrestlers, spent hours trying to make logos and paint tool that never looked nice because I'm not the brightest of the bunch but I had fun. This game was amazing. It really took advantage of what next gen at that point was. And it really took advantage of online capabilities at that point. And at the end of the day, it was a solid wrestling game that presented the product perfectly, gave us freedom, and it was just fun. Shout out to SVR 2010.